Welcome to Trade Finder, a series where I take a look at the 2015-2016 NBA season standings and take a look at some of the struggling teams and propose a what-if scenario trade for that said team. Today we are looking at the Boston Celtics, who are currently in the playoffs in the more improved Eastern Conference. Not necessarily a struggling team. No one really thought they'd be this good. I personally believe the Boston Celtics would be fighting for that 8th seed just like they were last year, but... They've definitely proved me wrong, and they're showing that they're a regular season team so far, and hopefully uh, they'll be great in the playoffs, maybe advance past the first round. Who knows? So today I propose three trades for the Boston Celtics to help them improve and solidify themselves as a top team in the Eastern Conference. That's, that's kind of crazy to say, considering how long uh, they've been irrelevant or rebuilding, rather. All three trades revolve around David Lee, who the Celtics are now putting him out of rotation and promised him a trade to a team where he could get a little bit more minutes and a team that may be able to use him a little bit more than the Celtics are using him. So we'll start off first with the most unrealistic trade that I'm pretty sure Boston Celtics fans would be happy if they got this guy. The first trade is between the Celtics and the Brooklyn Nets. The Celtics acquire Brooke Lopez and the Nets acquire David Lee and Tyler Zeller. So if you take a look at the Boston Celtics new look rotation, they finally got a dominant center. He may not be uh, a superstar but he was an all-star in his own right with the Brooklyn Nets and I feel like the Brooklyn Nets if the Celtics could throw in a few draft picks in there with David Lee and Tyler Zeller they'd be more than happy to trade away Brook Lopez get his salary off the books and try to rebuild the Celtics really look like a, a complete team and with this Brook Lopez trade they'd be even better on paper not to mention after all they do have the Nets draft pick adding a Ben Simmons type player Brandon Ingram type player to this roster with Brook Lopez next year would be absolutely crazy for this team and this team would honestly be elite in the eastern conference so now looking on to the brooklyn nets new look rotation they got tyler zeller to be their starting center after the brook lopez trade and david lee to swing between the center position and the power forward position for this said team luckily for the brooklyn nets getting rid of brook lopez and acquiring like a second round draft pick or something along those lines they also get expiring contracts. This team is filled with them. With Joe Johnson, David Lee now, Tyler Zeller. This team, it doesn't have any draft picks besides maybe a second round draft picks that if they trade for. So they got to build through free agency. And with all this cap coming off the books next year, this is a perfect opportunity to try and not overpay somebody like they did Joe Johnson and Brook Lopez. It's really a win-win scenario for both teams. And it really helps the Celtics now and in the future. The Brooklyn Nets, they don't look like they have a future, so trading away Brook Lopez, that seems to be the right thing to do, but who knows, we'll have to we'll have to see what happens at trade deadline or in the offseason. But moving on to the next trade. It's a three team trade. I haven't done a three team trade in a while because it takes a long time to edit these graphics. You know what I'm saying? So if you can leave a like, it'd be greatly appreciated. But the trade is between the Boston Celtics, New Orleans Pelicans, and the Chicago Bulls. So with the new rotation of the Boston Celtics, they get a guard in Eric Gordon who is like David Lee, an expiring contract, but maybe might get a little bit more minutes than David Lee, a lot younger than David Lee, more productive than David Lee, doesn't play defense, but as you look at the Boston Celtics rotation, I think they already got enough defense. He could provide that much needed offense off the bench, could either come off before Evan Turner or after Evan Turner, and most importantly, they don't have to re-sign him because he is an expiring contract. Now for the New Orleans Pelicans, new look rotation, they got a backup center slash power forward in Taj Gibson to help them out after trading Omer Ashik and David Lee who just like Ryan Anderson is an expiring contract so it allows the Pelicans to have much more flexibility when it comes to free agency and maybe allowing them to do a trade in free agency as well to get either Drew Holiday or Tyreek Evans off the team now that uh, Eric Gordon is no longer with the team. And lastly, the Bulls get back Omer Ashik who no longer have Joakim Noah for the remainder of the season. Pau Gasol is, I believe, uh, a free agent. He has an option option to opt in or opt out of his contract not sure if it's a player option or team option but Paul Gasol is getting up there getting up there with age as well putting up decent numbers though but I feel like with the Omer Ashik trade they have a, a solid backup for this Bulls team and just depending on whether or not what happens with Noah or Paul Gasol in free agency they have a guy there that they're familiar with in Ashik and maybe he could turn back the clock and be somewhere as productive as he was with the Bulls and be that player that the Pelicans wanted to overpay for or Houston rather but the Bulls are looking to be in panic mode Jimmy Butler is out of the all-star game out for three or four weeks uh, Miritich is out for a while Mike Dunleavy's been out 
and this team is looking pretty suspect especially in the eastern conference not the team that everyone has hyped them up to be for the past four years and lastly the final trade of this video will be between the boston celtics and the minnesota timberwolves the celtics acquire nikola pekovic and kevin martin while the timberwolves acquire david lee and tyler zeller now the only reason why i'm saying this is the most realistic trade out of the bunch of trades that i offered is because i honestly don't believe the boston celtics could strike the unrealistic center of demarcus cousins or hassan whiteside and then the next tier underneath that is the brooke lopez or greg monroe type player and then the next step underneath those types of players is the Nikola Pekovic's and Omer Ashik's of the NBA. I feel like they could get uh, a Nikola Pekovic type of player, try to bet on him to stay healthy, and he's under three-year contract. So I feel like this is the perfect trade for the Boston Celtics. You guys may agree or disagree with me. Kevin Martin is just there for contract reasons, only a two-year deal. So if the whole Brook Lopez trade or Greg Monroe trade or DeMarcus Cousins or Hassan Whiteside signing doesn't happen for this Boston Celtics team and they still want a big man. Nikola Pekovic is always an option. Bet on him to not be hurt. And it would still be a pretty solid team with Jared Salinger to stretch the floor. Moving on to the Minnesota Timberwolves new look rotation. They got Tyler Zeller, expiring contract. They could re-sign him if they want, along with David Lee, expiring contract. They're probably not going to re-sign him. Uh, this team just has a bunch of old guys mentoring the young guys, so I feel like adding David Lee to the group of Kevin Garnett, Tayshawn Prince, and Andre Miller would just go perfect for the, what the whatever the Timberwolves are trying to do right now. Overall, the Celtics are going to be in the playoffs this year. Will they make it out of the first round of the playoffs? Who knows? With one of these trades, they just might. But let me know in the comment section below, did you like these trades? Did you dislike these trades? Thank you guys for watching this episode. The playlist for NBA Trade Fighter is in the description along with my NBA preview playlist. With that said, this is going to be the last episode for this NBA season of NBA Trade Fighter. We'll be back like in December or January of 2017 when... Uh, trades are up and running again and teams are struggling i really do hope you guys see the hours of hard work i put into the graphics and editing these videos so i'll talk to you guys later bye bye